Trista, leaving it up for a potential team to get Toss Choice. Trist is up, though, and could be considered a trade pick. Getting that Thresh for Biofrost is huge, though. Playmaking for both of these supports, and Thresh is extremely versatile. That being said, let's see what Team Dignox can get back on the other side. Gragas and Jarvan are both up. Those are usually traded uh, because they are those very versatile bruisers. Um, and bottom lane could still be a focus. Yeah, this is so interesting that they had banned the Ash and the Twitch while leaving Tristana and Callista up. So I think we're going to see that AD carry trade in some way, Jarvan as a flex pick does speak more to that versatility for Team Dignitas, being able to put that in the jungle or the top lane. Well, we'll have to see, because certainly Dig have been pretty consistent playing around Altec and on some of these late game Paris. He loves to play those kind of champions, but today they will actually take Callista, like you said, Jet, the highest presence champion currently. Yeah. yeah. I still am pretty shocked that it wasn't banned or first picked away with how much priority we've been seeing on that pick across the globe, not to mention when Team Dignitas did play TSM during their 2-0 in the regular season, Callista was a really big part of that. Double Up has often talked about how when TSM are looking for the most consistent strategy though, they say put me on a late game carry and put Bjergsen on a late game AP yep. carry for the mid lane. So that would be the Dristana, you know, more late game is often picked into the Callista and then have Bjergsen on one of those high DPS mid laners. Uh, from the mid lane. It looks like that's what they are going through here. You know, the Thresh and Tristana does have a lot of versatility as well. That's one of the bottom lanes that can get a lot of early kills as well. Exactly, and it's playmaking all across the board for TSM and Dignitas, actually. Something that Dignitas has had a lot of success with is drafting very heavy CC compositions, getting a pick, and forcing Baron very early on into the game. And that's not unique to TSM. It's what most of the good teams have been doing. We see both teams with initiation and playmaking in every role. Yeah, I was going to say, I think of Adrian's Al star when I think of that, but Blitz going to be very good here as well. And of course, kind of opposing the Gragas, which is the other big playmaker you're noting there on TSM. So a very interesting first six picks here in phase one of the draft, but now Dig will get their chance to ban yet another champion. Yeah, five Blitz games for Adrian this year. Actually, uh, if you don't count playoffs, he played more Blitz than he did Alistair in the regular season. So it's been very effective, synergizes very well with Callista. And both these teams pretty much matching each other. We have the duo lanes and the junglers locked in. So the big solo lane heavy hitters here uh, still yet to come. And I am actually just so excited for this bottom lane matchup. We talked about a little bit, you know, coming into this series, but Altec and Adrian have been such a big part of TSM or of Team Dignitas, the new way that they're playing this game. And with Callista and Blitzcrank, we have seen if Adrian gets any sort of room early on in the lane and gets the roam up, he can actually affect mid lane very heavily as well. And maybe he tries to go pester Bjergsen. I'm curious to see what's happening in phase two, though. Cho and LeBlanc banned from Dignitas. So Taking away some solo lane is most likely the Gragas and Choi can flex top and jungle. And then the Syndra ban away from Kane for Bjergsen, of course, one of his biggest champions, and might even throw another ban here to kind of joining with the cast. I was going to say Talia is probably the one that has not been banned out here and is still left up. Would be the, you know, kind of go to if you're just going down the tier list choice here for uh, mid laners. But it seems as though TSM, we were expecting them to cook up something special coming out with so much extra practice time and it may be revolving around that mid lane. Uh, we'll see if Keen actually goes for the more obvious choice or if Team Dignitas actually want to save their counter pick because they could save counter pick till the very end. There they go though, they're going to yep. take the obvious one. Take the safe one. Uh, depending on where you're looking, Talia can be seen as a must ban, but it really depends on how you look at the game right now as there's a lot of diversity in that mid lane. So Team Dignitas saves their flex pick right there, so they're not revealing where that is going, which means TSM has to blind their top laner as well as get the counter pick for mid right here. Yeah, I'm super curious as far as the counter because what it seems like plan? TSM maneuvered this entire draft in order to get this for Bjergsen, and they kind of funneled Keen into this pick. This is the intended counter, and it looks like they may even go with double possible split pushes here for the double teleport, you know, 1-3-1 one, one strategy. Yeah, and TSM did play Cassidy twice during the regular season. It didn't look clean, but they did win both games. And when they combo with the Shen, they still have that team fight backup if they really want to. If they can stall to the late game, you can bring in Shen with a level 16 Cassidy and really destroy the backline of Talia and Callista if they get to that point. The danger here for TSM is going to be their lack of wave clear. And the thing about, uh, you know, Cassidy into Talia is, yes, 
Kassadin doesn't have to use a dash to dodge a lot of Talia's damage, and you can outplay the Talia in that one versus one. The problem is, whenever you're giving over Talia, you are giving over that wave control advantage, plus the ability for Keen to affect the side lanes really early on. And Team Dignitas, their composition is oriented much earlier than TSM's is. So we'll see about this early game from Team Dignitas. If they can get it started off quickly, they've got Kalista to snowball objectives. They have Renekton pushing up on the side yeah. lane as well. So there's definitely a lot of early focus. And I think so much of that early focus will actually be around whether or not Keen can push in Bjergsen. Because when we look at these matchups, we talk about how the bottom lanes are super exciting, how TSM can maybe get their advantage out of the mid lane because the Bjergsen versus Keen matchup seems like it should be lopsided for TSM. When you pick a pushing mid like Talia into Kassadin, and if that lane pushes, they get at least two, maybe three pushing lanes, that's when Team Dignitas could maybe take over the map. For me, at a very high level, we have seen TSM succeed with split push comps, but they do not look amazing. This is a real test versus a team that loves to fight you, especially around that big Baron that Dick and Tusk have had so much success with. Certainly have to see how the comps line up though, because game one is going to be a doozy. Expecting this series to be, I'm going to say dramatic. And it's very difficult to say exactly who will win and what the game <laughs> score will be. But I think no matter what happens, this is much closer than people may look at one versus five and say, hey, this is actually going to be an incredible semi. Yeah, and the point that Kobe talked about for TSM when they're going with their reliable plays, it's Bjergsen on a big time late game control mage. Even though Kassadin does have late game, it's not a control mage. This is not your safe, reliable TSM composition whatsoever. Definitely going to be more than dangerous in the early game. Let's see what they can do. Shrimp has actually had some very versatile jungle openings. He switches up his path a lot. Jarvan is one of those champions. I always like to caution about, can start off with straight red buff level two ganks. Uh, he actually doesn't need to get to that level three that a lot of junglers do to have a super high impact gank. And just that kind of early threat sometimes is enough for people to you know, go for early invades. Also, on top of that, you know, we have Blitzcrank and, you know, the rest of the level one powerhouses on this side as well. Yeah, Shrimp himself has also had a lot of success against TSM. The first series that he subbed in for this split was the first series Dignitas had against TSM, and he was victorious. And even thinking about MSI or TSM in general, they have not found the most success against the most unpredictable junglers. TSM likes to have as much control over the game as possible so they can outplay you with superior lanes. And whenever you have that wild card of a jungle, it can cause some problems. I think the big carries we are going to be looking to for both teams here. Double lift and Bjergsen will need to weather some of the early game storm and survive to that mid to late game point. But Dig have been very good at taking a lead and then accelerating the game. And even though I put a lot of faith in their late game, especially with how they like to play in draft, I think this is a team that can show us different speeds and will honestly need to if they're going to topple TSN here as Shrimp taking that blue buff away. Looks like blue starts for both jungles, so nothing too crazy at level one. Yeah, the bottom lane for Team Dignitas actually spending some time pulling there. That allows Doublelift and Biofresh to get the early push on this wave in the bottom side and try and get that threat of level two started. See exactly how the 2v2 goes in. Both of these dual ends love to play aggressive. It's kind of funny. Adrian, a very aggressive support, and Altec, you think of more of your farming late game carry. I think Double Lift's the aggressor usually in this lane, but Biofrost has stepped up to the plate there as well. Definitely could be the case. Anytime you have your bottom lane pulling for your jungle, though, and it's not just solo queue, you have to worry about what he's trying to get done on the other side of the map. This is a Renekton lane up top side. You know, Someday definitely has a long history with this champion. And Shrimp actually is doing a four camp clear, which is yeah. abnormal, especially for Jarvan. Not even going for the Scuttle Crab that early on. And it's pretty abnormal for Shrimp as well, because he did a level three rush, but didn't use it to gank lanes. And we're getting a preview of what we might see a lot more of this game is double lift, being able to rocket jump out of Blitzcrank hooks. The timing on that is extremely precise. You have to start the cast time of the rocket jump as the hook hits you. If you're too early, the hook will pull you out of the jump. And obviously, if you're too late, you just get hooked. So he's got a very small window to do that, but double lift is one of the most reliable of pulling off that board. It definitely is a lot easier just to go earlier on it as well. Oh, Gerson does get tagged by uh, one seismic shove, so a little bit of harassment coming in and Keen is getting that early shove. Shrimp though will be seen. Got a level lead here but Sven yep, just gonna <laughs> spot him. 
And then Ward over the other side. Trim gonna dunk a ward back in and looks like he'll just run away. Onsa maybe attempted a die, but Shen looking safe so far. Yeah, Shrimp is five camps to Svenskeren's four. That's something that the pull definitely helped for, and being able to take the Gromp definitely will slow down Svenskeren. Well, nice little trade onto Altec. Adrian lining up the hook, does land it, but double it doesn't take tower aggro. Altec though, still taking damage as the rent is not gonna pop out of range now on Altec. Not quite enough damage on the other end. Yeah, double if quick on that jump does get out of rend range. Able to dodge a lot of the damage in those trades. And this is one of the reasons that Tristana, we always talk about being one of the favorite picks into Kalista, uh, because of the fact that Kalista's trades are so much more beneficial when they're longer. And then you get to finally end it with that rend, where Tristana can go a lot more upfront damage, doesn't have to fully explode uh, the explosive charge on the head to get a decent amount uh, out of his trade. Well, it looks like Bjerg's actually been forced back here. Shrimp camping left side of mid, maybe hoping he makes a mistake, but there's two duck seals in Bjergsen's inventory. Yep, going for the early value here on those rings. Uh, we'll see if he actually gets to stack any of them up because Shrimp right now camping on this control ward wants to gank him before level six. This is sort of the classic thing whenever you see Cassidens. Yes, you can always shove them in and you talk about wave control, but ganking them pre-six so effective before he has his own escape. And the wave was in a really bad spot right there for Bjergsen. He moved up because he wanted to be able to last hit the cannon with the Q, and that's all the Shrimp was waiting for. Yep. Nice play there from Kane as the trades move back and forth. Shove not going to connect, but Shrimp staying around just in case. Spin also here, but Kane's just doing it solo right now. Yeah, and you can see the double Dark Seal with the Corrupting Potion. Bjergsen, I think, is doing that. He doesn't have the health for the all-in, but he does get more sustained. The non-unique part of the Dark Seal is the ability power as well as the enhanced healing from potions. So that Corrupting Potion heals him for a ton. We are seeing another hook here on the bottom side as well, but it's a little friendly trade. Now, the other thing is that Bjergsen is consistently uh, dodging forward here is what we're seeing on the seismic shove. Right now, Svenskeren could threaten the flash body slam, but doesn't even choose to use the body slam. Now, one thing I would definitely say, it's almost always worth it unless you don't have vision to just throw out your body slam because oftentimes you can get that panic flash from the enemy mid laner who has to respect your flash extension of your range. But because they have a control where they're for Team Dig and Toss, there's no vision and Sven doesn't want to take an early risk in this series. And especially as Keen starts hitting level six, you have to be more wary of that control ward coverage in the river for the Talia gank. One thing about the casting with Teleport, though, as long as he's not losing his turret, is he can match as long as that cooldown stays low. Keen there taking advantage of the tendency we did see from Bjergsen. Maybe he'll switch up his dodging pattern next. Not checking the control ward reveals Sven Skarin once again. This also is tracking for a Shrimp to most likely get level 6 uh, off of this Raptor camp and could think of going for a return gank uh, on Bjergsen, but Bjergsen just came 6, so that's probably off the table. Yep, should be safe now. And Sven gonna finish off this camp. A little low on mana, but should be okay. Maybe even fainting towards top lane, but yeah, has to go back and regen. And looks like the lanes are just gonna stabilize back once more. Shrimp did walk over just to defend that control ward around mid lane, though. I believe he just uh, threw down the flag there on Bjergsen to dissuade him from finishing it off. So for the time being, Team Big still retain control on the top side of the map. And Shrimp then uses that to walk from control ward to control ward and go for this blue steel, denying Cassidy, trying to give Keen more uptime here with the blue buff so that he can really retain that positioning advantage in mid lane. Actually gonna take this one for himself and save the, the second one for his own handoff. Yeah. Let's see if they die. I think they're looking to at least pressure him off the turret. They've done an early swap on that bottom lane. They were on a back timing, knowing that Doublelift is gonna go back to base as well, and we're maybe even hoping for a fight at the blue buff. Well, swap back actually from TSM will be matched here, and Bjergsen's held onto that teleport, which is what let Keen freeze that wave on him. So all those cooldowns very much being respected on both sides, and looks like the swap will just be neutral as Haunter Double and Bio gonna clear out the rest of that wave, and Bjergsen TP's back to mid, finally able to use it safely. Yeah, if you remember back to early on in the summer split, we actually saw those early swaps being extremely effective, but very quickly we had teams adapt to, even just sending one extra member up to defend makes it so much easier to defend, uh, you know, that first turret push that a lot of the aggression kind of stalled out. And we saw what we saw here, which was just kind of a pure answer with both bottom lanes uh, defending on the top side. Yeah, quietly that was a pretty good play from both teams. It was just played properly, so we saw no conflict that could have been 
a big move with the control ward coverage that Dig had and then rotating up the Blitz and Callista early. A lot of times that means a dead top laner and first turn of the game, but TSM was actually very good at reading it as well with the one ward they had to at least see their blue was getting stolen away to be able to respond accordingly. And you can see Adrian and Altec just hanging out on that brush on top of their control ward, hoping TSM walk too far forward. Bjergdo keeping safe as well. His wave's in a good spot right now. Yeah, his CS is a lot higher than Keen's, and some of that is from the teleport being used. So I'm wondering if Keen's going to be able to get any pressure. When the wave's shoved in like that and Bjerg is freezing, that's when the time to make a Talia play is. Yeah, I mean, you can credit it for some, maybe like a wave, which is six minions, but he's 20, 20 over 20 above him here. Bjergsen definitely focusing on the minions uh, in that matchup. And yeah, he did have to blow his flash early with the gank, but he is absolutely crushing here. Keen must have been focusing very heavily on harassment uh, rather than going for the last hits because, you know, there's not a lot of extra threat that's been thrown towards towards that mid lane from TSM's side. Yeah, and TSM is completely content with keeping this game in a holding pattern because you look at roll for roll, Kasten outscaling Talia, Tristan outscaling Callista, and Shen even outscaling Renekton. The time is not now for TSM to try and make plays. It's all on Team Dignitas. Yeah, and we did talk up a lot about how early game oriented Team Dignitas' composition is. That still holds true for another item, another item and a half for them. Mm -hmm. So they haven't run out of time yet, but as you said, this is definitely the smooth opening that TSM uh, were looking for. Let's see if the, the Kalista actually is able to get any sort of hold on these objectives though, because with the swap up top, you know, there's a lot less pressure on dragons and it really has rotated over to Rift Herald instead. Yeah, we can kind of check on the other lanes just quickly. Nice trade earlier from Haunted, but Sunday going to go back in. Nice Haunted's going to land. Sunday though, going big with the ultimate. I mean, Creep Wave still being tanked out by Haunted. Sunday still trying to fight it out, but a good little shield might be enough for Haunted. Forced to flash. Sunday grabs the summoner. Always aggressive here, and we'll see if that draws out the teleport as well. Uh, he does have multiple options here since, you know, Stan United's very clearly available uh, to try and get back and defend this turret. But if they really want to keep that option on top side open, where everybody is converging right now, and he actually even sees Shrimp up there, then he would save it. All right, there it comes down. Now it would just be the one-for-one -one answer. Mm -hmm. Hook attempted, finds Biofrost, Flash, but he gets knocked up on the other end of it. Shrimp looking for the dump, but double it for the great Buster shot. Disengages the top end of the play. Bjergsen knocked back in, but he's just going at Keen. And this is, where the this is where the problem starts for Talia. Yeah, and Bjergsen is winning these trades. One thing that we should point out with the Talia nerfs is it almost forced you to go Morellonomicon because of the mana constraints on the threaded volley. So previously, Keen would be able to stack magic resist. Now he can't. And because of that, Bjergsen's winning those trades. And very clearly, in Champion Select, you know, we began to get suspicious when TSM were banning out every single prime mid laner except Talia and left it up mm -hmm. for Team Dignitas. It's very clearly their plan coming into it. And Bjergsen, especially with the double Dark Seals on Kassadin, it's definitely proving to be very successful this early on. And we get a little bit of a glimpse into what TSM were practicing during their off time. And again, even with all this scaling built into TSM's comp, Dig unahead at all. The game's actually dead even in gold. Bjergsen's ahead in mid, bot and top uneven as far as the CS goes there. And that's the game plan. If they're at this point at 12 minutes, that's great for TSM. And it starts to get so so much more scary for any control mage that is up against Kassadin. After, you know, we say, oh yes, plus it is the ultimate available for Kassadin, so there's always that kill threat, but he doesn't have to worry, uh, you know, about the rocks on the ground. He very easily can dodge a lot of the skill sets that come from Talia, so that's why this specific one is even, even worse for Talia than uh, most others. TSM trying to defend their blue buff, though. Skill attempt here from Dig, but will be thwarted there by TSM. Sven should be able to get that, but he's actually going to wait and donate it over to Bjergsen. So blue goes over to the intended recipient there. Dig and Pass will not steal the next one. As Bjergsen's able to secure that. And again, Dig's just kind of going more than fine here. Everyone's scaling up. No completed items just yet on either side, but... Just a farm fest feels pretty good given the drop that TSM have put together here. Yeah, not even a Drake taken for Team Dignitas. And when you look at the compositions, the, the top lane Renekton has the shove advantage. The Talia, you would think would have some of that advantage, but Bjergsen is proving otherwise in this mid lane with Kassadin and Talia. And the shoving lanes just aren't there for Team Dignitas. So TSM is free to continue to just scale up in this game. And Rod of Age is now finished for Bjergsen. So that scaling 
going to keep moving even further forward for them as it does feel like Dignitas' bottom lane is starting to run out of pressure here. This is one of the reasons why Tristana is such a good pick is that she's pretty good early, maybe a bit of a dip in the mid game, but in this sort of lane where you're just able to freely push and create pressure, that's all that Double If really wants here. And they've been doing a nice job 2v2 actually getting a CS lead as well. Now we'll see what happens when Altec gets to play the Rune King, if that is, if that is indeed what... You know, he's rushing for first here on Kalissa, and if then Team Dignitas start to, you know, force those issues. But as of right now, you know, still just sitting on the stand United. TSM have their defenses in place. Someday, though, is working up a decent CS lead himself in the one versus one with Renekton, as we would definitely expect, and Dignitas getting a little bit of tower pressure. Yeah, and TSM actually swapping back once again, maybe trying to go at the Renekton. There are still power spikes yet to be hit. The Blade of the Rune King is one, the Black Cleaver is another for Team Dignitas, where they will still be okay. Like you said, they have time to try and make these plays and get this early game lead. Well, Biofrost got spotted, but I don't think Double F has just yet, except now he will. But he's gonna go ahead and take down the minion wave. TSM on a race for this turret. It's 3v2, but T got a big head start. Make it 4v2 and they have for Trick then. Looks so this like is going to be pretty close, actually. Should be, but looks like it might be going over one way. Dig already there, I think. Altec able to grab it. Ooh, barely able to get that first turret goal, but Dig do grab the bonus. Yeah, strong effort there, but Team Dignitas able to get that bonus. They'll definitely need that to boost up to those first item power spikes. So you're talking about Black Cleaver now coming in for someday, but Dragon is the transition from TSM immediately yeah. afterwards. We'll see if Team Dignitas answer with the Rift Herald, though, because I still really like the Rift Herald this early in the game. Gives you a lot more pressure, especially around mid turret. And that, to me, is, is the most value that you get out of that objective. So it would definitely be important if they're able to secure this Rift Herald. Uh, especially with the team that they have and trying to crack open that extra territory. Yeah, but they're not even going for it. The timing doesn't sync up. They recalled immediately after that. I will say that the ward that spotted Biofrost is the reason that Team Dignitas was able to secure the top lane turret. That's what gave them the confidence to redouble their efforts down on that side. But then they just didn't trust the Rift Herald start against a double TP team. I still think that the Rift Herald is Team Dignitas' two take because TSM have sent their bottom lane down bottom again. And uh, with the Callista, it does have that extra security for taking it. You can easily tank it up. Riffail doesn't put out much DPS at all. Um, and they really would only need one extra person. Yeah, I do wonder if they commit there, if GSM could take anything else. I'm surprised they sent Trist back down bottom with no turret to take. A lot of weird swaps going on right now. Keen actually runs up to the top side. Almost really like he's escaping the Cassidy. Yeah, it's weird because I kind of expected Bjergsen to leave, but I think he's afraid of Renekton with a Black Cleaver. So he can't win that match up right now. But if he finds Kane in a side lane, that's a great lane for him to start split pushing. So Dignitas have priority of mid right now, at least, moving their dual lane there first. Yeah, lane allocations are going to be very important in this series. As we see Cassidy now being switched up to the top side. But I think that would give them the opening to just collapse onto Rift Hail. They have pushed both top and mid lane. A little bit of time here, but just making sure all the wards are out. Once a TP again, by the way, he's actually in the bot lane. So this is kind of the expected lane allocation for TSM, but just a little late having to use the summoner to sort of rejigger everyone to the right places. And dig as a result, we'll take that tempo and start the Rift Herald. This is what Kobe was talking about earlier. Even though the Tris did roam to the mid lane, uh, does still have the setup for it to get to the Rift Herald. What's interesting here is the mid lane turret has barely been touched, so even a full charge from the Rift Herald would not secure them that mid turret without some more help. Definitely still could try and exploit if they leave Cassidy in the mid lane. So that's why TSM have rotated Tristana there, who does have the explosive shot for some wave clear. Even though double if not to static shiv or anything yet, it's better than having the Cassidy in mid lane if the Rift Herald does come down. Uh oh. Yeah, Trip might be looking for a gank. Bjergsen pretty far forward here. If he uses his Rift Walk to clear the minion wave one more time, ah, Svenskeren does see the threat there. Yes, Bjergsen gets the Grump out of the deal. Dig for Strong actually looking for a play in top lane. And I'm a little surprised they didn't get a little bit more aggressive onto Svenskeren there. They didn't have the deep vision, and maybe they thought the Trist and Thresh were going over. But the confidence I saw out of Team Dignitas in the quarterfinal against C9, they would have gone for that play. It actually feels like there is a level of hesitancy coming out of them this game. They haven't, I feel like, even used a flash in the first 18 minutes. And oftentimes, you'd see them using something to try and make a play happen. It's the reason First Blood is still on the table here 18 minutes in. Team's playing very carefully in these first few minutes. Dig's starting to break it open 
a little more now. Someday should be able to pressure this down enough with Haunts are moving away. Plus, since Team Dignitas have the Rift Trail to activate, they can actually kind of jumpstart the tempo to this game. While Someday is pushing on bottom, and yes, TSM are going up to the top side, Dignitas had two options there. They could have made a strong push on mid and used the Rift Trail. Uh, to then kind of make TSM get, play the game of chicken after pull up. But instead, they're yep. going for the go. defense. They're going to fight. They actually may have caught by a close draw. going to pull a back right shot there from King. But Holland United in his agent taking a little too much damage. He goes down. And Bjergsen going to go first by the Honda with the taunt as the Hawk finds one. Huge pick on a key and a double shot to leap out of the way of Sunday. Bjergsen grabs the double, but Sunday looking to play clean up on the other side. The red grabs out like a double kill. It's a mess here at Shrimp. He's going to fall for Bjergsen's triple, but he has to run. Flashes over the wall. Three dead on either side. What an amazing first team fight. Oh, someday is not done yet. And Bjergsen has a bunch of stacks on his ult. Gonna a few the seconds. There's a slow, the stun is gonna land. Someday jump. should be able to clean it up. There's the first jump, but someday still gonna chase. Auto needs it. Bjergsen gets away again, but someday chases out of the tower. Looks for the Q, grab the W. There's the shutdown. We waited 19 minutes for it, but we finally saw it. And Team Dignitas' option to move top instead of heralding mid means they wanted this fight. And it was a little bit rough for them to start it out as well, because Adrian gets focused very quickly, TSM do collapse, and after the second activation of the Callista ultimate comes out, he flashes deeper into the team. Double up and Bjergsen are able to finish up that kill. But then, once Someday arrives, it's the big Renekton. Altec is still alive, by the way, and he flashes into the middle of TSM for that big Ren. Him being able to chase down Bjergsen and landing that extra slow means Someday finally gets the chase. Yeah, Altec pretty much untouched that entire fight, and it was only rough, I feel like, for Team Dignitas because Someday didn't have a ward closer to the fight. It took him a good 10 seconds to make it in there after Double if Buster shot at him away. And the kill distribution from this fight is actually quite ideal for TSM. Triple kill for the Cassidy, who's already uh, accrued a CS lead in the early game, will make him massive. But with that being said, the double kill on to all techs. Callista is pretty substantial as well. Yep, certainly a lot of gold collected all of a sudden. Still, even as far as the overall lead goes, dig up but only by about 600 gold. But certainly Zonia's plus a Sheen now on top of Bjergsen's first rod of Aegis. So he will be on full-time split push duty for the next 10 minutes, probably. Here comes that mid-rift herald. Uh, Team Dignitas are trying to use it in conjunction with Zolia while that guarantees nice. that this sucker is dead. Yeah, really good job there. They see the Bjergsen and Hanser split pushing in the 1-3-1, even with the double TP up. They move, they don't fully commit, but they get the Talia wall down, so this is safe territory. So if we revisit our story of Team Dignitas and the early control that they would want to have, now they're hitting these two item power spikes. Callista on the Blade of the Ruin King, plus the Hurricane is where Altec really can shine in these team fights because Double F doesn't have his Infinity Edge yet, right? So this is kind of the big discrepancy. That's why all the neutral objectives at this moment should be going to Team Dignitas, and he is able to secure this Ocean Drake by himself. Simple solo there for Altec. Takes down the Ocean Drake, gives that over to Dignitas, and evens up the overall Drake count. Double if does have that static ship, but certainly building towards item number two. And Callista is already cost efficient with how she wants to build. So that gold Altec just got from that team fight, certainly helping out then. And I feel like Dig, you can sense it in their play, starting to push the pace a lot more. Yeah, and they know that Altec is the big guy right now, and they're fastly approaching the level 16 Cassidy and spike that Bjergsen would be able to hit with Lichbane, which could invalidate Altec later on. So. They need to get vision control around there. This is where Dignitas has excelled with risky Baron calls this year. Definitely was on display in their previous matchup there versus Cloud9, where they had the big victory. Right now, TSM are doing just that, trying to get some vision to work with. The big thing about Cassidy in here, uh, Bjergsen has gone for a very quick Zonia's, which is really oriented towards that team fighting, towards mm -hmm. jumping in onto Altec, then Zonia Zing during the ultimate, uh, and waiting for that uh, timer to come back up. But he also benefits heavily from having those flanks warded, having that fog of war to get the easy you know, line there into the backside where he can actually try and get some damage done before having to use the Zonia. So you want to be able to kind of use it offensively uh, to reset a two-part attack rather than defensively Zonia Zing super early on in the team fight. And again, all the global sort of coming together here for TSM. Bjergsen pushes out the very long wave in top lane, gets that towards the tier two fight again here for Bjerg. You know, to Shrimp. 
Gets some damage down. Sven finds Adrian, but the Callisto all gonna keep him safe. Back now in. back in offensively. Found Bjergsen. Puts him back around. That's enough CC stage United. And the Zonis will get Haunter in safely, but Bjerg needs to live through the rest of the fight. He on to Alta, but he does go down Keen. I'm gonna take him off. A great wall. Wins Dignitas that fight. And now another kill forthcoming. Sven is gonna flash into the Baron pit, but Dignitas aren't having any of it. Keen gonna they try and chase him down. I mean, they are gonna start it. Sven zoned out completely. Keen gonna keep chasing. I don't think he'll get it, but I don't think it matters. That aggressive Baron call. They got very low off of it, though. Team Dictas, even with the uh, Ocean Drake here, that was a little bit too big of a chunk <laughs> to try and buy it off. Sven Skaren still gaining health back in the jungle, walking around here, and Biofast gets him a path out. But that was the quick reaction speed on display. I was just talking about not have, wanting to use your Zonia super defensively early on, but because they go for this initiation here, the immediate reaction from Alltech to turn the play around and actually attack Bjergsen gets his cooldowns out immediately. Yeah, and this was just a beautiful play by Adrian to want to turn that one around. It almost looked like an overly defensive cooldown, but it was all a ruse to try and get the re-engage. Uh, but as we were watching that replay, TSM had begun the Baron mm -hmm. right before a pause. So a very tense moment in the game right here. We'll have to figure out what that pause is Yep, for. oopsie uh, for Adrian. Spilled some water on his mouse. So gonna need to fix that one. Pull the Haunter! Playing against TSM. Not I mean, I, I've done that as well. <laughs> I, I feel like the majority of people have spilled something on some of their peripherals. Yeah, just wiping up the water on that mouse still. Everyone headsets on for this moment. Yep, shouldn't be a huge delay, but yeah, you can see. I've MVP never heard <laughs> cheers for napkins. <laughs> <laughs> Loudest cheers for napkins I've ever heard. Woo! See? Dig napkins, <laughs> let's go! <laughs> An excellent work that our referees do. Credit to them for uh, quickly addressing the issue on stage. This is where they still need crumbs on the team who would always play yeah, with the clock. Exactly! Like, I got one right here for you. We don't even need someone <laughs> to go get you a napkin. That was definitely one of the weirdest things, that he actually still had that high accuracy with his mouse clicks, with, yeah. considering the cloth was over the entire time. Hands got too sweaty. You know what's uh, less accurate than cloth over the mouse, Kobe? Hands slipping straight off and not being able to use it. So I'd, I'll defend crumbs here in his cloth. Yeah. It didn't well, help that it was like pink... Minnie Mouse, something like that. It was like really special. It was a crumb classic. But we are back to the game. Ones, but this is a huge moment in the game. And it's a great call with the Mountain Drake for TSM and the teleport from Bjergsen. <laughs> I spilled water on my bear and hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see what's actually happening here as they finish the Baron take. We were just talking about quick reactions though. TSM shot calling right there. Yeah. As soon as they see Dignitas get chased out, I feel like that control word is immediate place, but there was no no option for Team Dinktas to quickly recheck the Baron as they were leaving. And so TSM actually take advantage of this small opening still fairly early into the game. This is a very, very big bridge, and TSM just need that bridge from early game into the late game we keep hyping up for them. Yeah, and this is just a quick pause. Bjergsen is having, this was initiated by Bjergsen, uh, an issue with camera lock, so when they unlock the camera, you'll be able to hop right back into the game. I've done that a bunch of times. Small tip is just click on the mini map with your mouse. It moves the camera and it magically unlocks it without having to like click the button that doesn't work. All right. Yeah. Try, I've hockey. learned that through trial and error. The, ho <laughs> the, the, the hockey, it gets bugged in the same way that the little button does by the mini map. That's why mm -hmm. I had to come right. up with that solution. Pro tips. I'll definitely <laughs> keep that one in mind. But this was kind of my worry stylistically coming into this matchup for Dig is that as excellent of, as they have been around Baron and how good they've been at being decisive, winning fight, and then transitioning aggressively through the mid game, TSM to me plays a very similar style and they're just as decisive, arguably just as good or if not better at executing in team fights. And at least in this game, they've taken a much better late game draft that you think they can strong on the rest of the game too. So as good as Dig have been at getting Baron, TSM are good at it also. So a big similarity in styles creates some big tense moments and this time TSM win the exchange. Yeah, and let's actually back this one up because Team Dignitas did have that good reinitiation onto Bjergsen and then turn for Baron. But the fact that they turned for that little Baron threat that was too ambitious is what costs them this one? Because that delays their recalls, it delays their reset of the fight, and it allow Bjergsen to respawn, get in position, and move for this one. Health conservation in the mid game is paramount. That's one of those things that leads to these big types of plays and leads to the swing in vision. Like when people get chunked out that heavily, just starting up Baron 
has a very big health cost if you don't have a massive tank. And this mm -hmm. early in the game, you can't have a massive tank built up, even if your jungler is building full tank. You yep. know, Shrimp cannot have enough armor to tank up a you know, 23, 24 minute Baron there. And uh, we saw that they were already damaged plus in vision of TSM. And just like you said, that's, that's a very intelligent punish there from TSM on just you know, that small health lead and the extra vision that they have. Yeah, exactly. And we've talked so much about Team Dignitas' ability to play around Baron this year, uh, but it does come at great cost. When they can make those sneaky Barons, if it doesn't necessarily work out, you do pay the penalty. And mostly just praise here towards TSM for being able to capitalize that and make a 24 minute of their own happen. And guys, uh, you know, we didn't really check in when Double Lift got his Infinity Edge, but he does have it now, looking mm -hmm. at the items during the pause, so. With Baron. The scary Cassidy in late game, the scary Tristana scaling, uh, are starting to become a reality. And with Baron being that bridge for another couple of minutes for TSM, I feel like they are very comfortable now with the way that this game is heading. Yeah, we've had the game be within a thousand gold as we pop back in, and now with Baron, TSM should really break open a lead. If they can execute correctly, we'll see how Dignitas' defense against the Baron has been, considering how good they've been with it on, it on offense. But they can also still wait, which is the flexibility they bought themselves here, because they can let Bjergsen farm up to Lichbane and level 16, or they could let Doublelift complete his second zeal item to really hit the power spikes they want to. So a lot of control they have here, and at the very least, they're going to be able to push up these waves. Team Dink Dots are definitely going to be looking. Oh, Adrian finds the hook, but it's haunted. He grabbed the lance. should be able to get him out, but there's a lot covering it. Spirit's Refuge, and he's going to click it. Now the hook lands in, but the Fates Call is going to pull Adrian out to safety. Reengage knocks up Haunter again. Oh, Adrian did not want to get hooked after reactivating that Callista ultimate. And TSM rotate up top. They've got another minion wave, and turret goes down. Dirksen had already started that off, so an easy take there for TSM as they take the first tier two turret of this game. Yeah, and you can see the sense of urgency from Dignitas right there. They did not want to wait for TSM to just take two or three turrets during the duration of this Baron buff. So they went for a play, just didn't work out. I actually thought that Adrian was gonna go for another hook, but I didn't quite see the cooldown on the, his basic ability at that point, since he had just used it so frequently. Um, yeah. But uh, when they're separated like that, even pulling in the tank twice like could have been an option uh, if they were able to get some sort of momentum there. Anytime you can kind of delay the team with Baron buff uh, by pulling off one member, would definitely buy them a little bit of an opening. Still a 14 second cooldown on Rocket Crab. He's only got 10% CDR on his Blitzcrank at this point in the game. So, probably still on gets cool that down. one shot. And Bjergsen almost level 16. The Lich Bane also now finishes Biofrost. Gonna get out from under that trap that Dick set. Adrian is trying to find those hooks. Blitz crank can turn again quickly, but TSM just on a wall path right now. This T2 turret in bot lane's gonna melt. Baron buff Trist, as well as a tank line, and a Thresh to pull him to safety. That is exactly the position you want to be in. All right, Adrian's going again, but Missed they... It. Someday's on there, though. Oh, someday a little too far forward. Gets up with the ultimate Haunter. Get a the hook left, a bio double. Coming to take him down now to 5v4 under the turret. Haunter, able to tank it up for a lot longer. Keen's wall is nice, but Haunter may have taken too much damage. Finally gets free as Fen dodges Adrian's next hook. And TSM, they grab a kill. They grab a kill, they grab the extra turrets. Fen Scaring even counter jungles on his way out, escaping over to the Raptor pit and grabbing some more money. With uh, Hunter going back to base, Stan United still available. TSM keep up the pressure. They want to go for a big play. They can't Ooh, come here. It's good. They found the Stan United in. The Sony needs to be missed. Finally used the lane. They've got a hook in on the shrimp. Damage will be enough as Bjerg gets his way up. Double lift, not CC'd up for Hunter and Fen fighting the front line under the turret. Adrian finally does the double lift. It's a counter kill on this Fen as double. He's going to be trapped in the base. King doesn't quite connect the rest of the damage on the double lift and TSM somehow escaped. You're not gonna get much better of a start there, hooking in Bjergsen, nearly killing him, having the Zonias come with the Shen and then him basically being a non-factor in that fight, but they still kinda win it. They trade a one for one, plus they can now peel back for the Mountain Drake. And we have arrived. 28 minutes into the game, TSM feel like they have fully scaled here. Double lift should be able to complete another item on back there and Bjergsen surviving after that Zonia's and getting out meant that it was actually a one for two trade in favor of TSM, even considering how deep they got inside the base. Here's the early kill there on the someday that they got to start it all off. Yeah, the Renekton 
gets cut through pretty fast at this stage in the game, trying to now build up some armor, but will not match the tankiness of the Shannon. Can't get Sven Skarin on the way out. That was the one. Then the next one for one comes in right here. Great hook by Adrian, and still a strong CC chain, knocking him up twice, but they can't quite get the last hit. The Stan United shield from Hanser buys Bjergsen enough time to live through the CC combo and actually survive. Able to reactivate and get out. Everybody jumping over the wall in the end. And there you go. It's level 16 Kassadin. Fully leveled up Rift Walk. Lich Bane completed as well. So he's got the extra burst on impact. Now it gets very, very difficult for Team Dignitas to outplay. Yeah, his Void Staff's not far away. And Double Lift has three and a half items finishing that Last Whisper as well. The gold lead isn't huge for TSM. It's only about 3,000 gold up. But it should be more than enough with this comp to try and take the game. We always tailor the stories to the games based on that champion select. Let's see what they can actually do with it. Haunter is back out, split pushing there with the Shen. Teleport and Stan United both available at this point, so TSM can just sit back, wait for him to slowly push up with the Sunfire Cape before actually pulling the trigger. Another minute and a half still left on Baron, so they don't have to rush anything. Yeah, I think the Baron setup is going to be the next stage in this game, but as a level 16 Shen, not going to be soloed out by Someday, who's now transitioned to a tank build. Uh, and it is about getting the waves in the right position so they can make a play. That does leave some windows for Dignitas to get picks. Checking to get vision around Baron against Talia, Callista, Blitzcrank can still be very dangerous. So Team Dignitas with some options left. And the window did not need to be particularly large for TSM to take Baron number one. Now with two Mountain Drake should be <laughs> no. even easier to rush it down if Dignitas give them an opening. That was like a little basement window yeah. there <laughs> near the ground. Nobody even knows it exists. Uh, it was dark and TSM just able to jump right in and grab that one. But let's see about number two because Team Dignitas will be aware of this one. As you said, Jad, probably Team Dignitas biggest. Uh oh, never mind. Grab, oh man. Grab onto Adrian forces another defensive Callista ult. That's one of the biggest options that Team Dignitas would have had for an offensive play. Now, without the Callista ultimate, they don't have the options of the... Uh-oh, another one! That was really nice, actually, but Sven pretty tanky on the front side. Hook on a shrimp! He's going in, but Double Lift already killed him. Spirit's Refuge taking so much damage for Hunter in the front line. And TSM poised to take the rest of this fight. Double jumps once as Sunday leaps into the front side to try and take down Firefrost, but he's already bleeding low. Altec fighting Hunter, and Hunter is not gonna no. do it! Gets out of Renrich, a Latin! Saves his life. Altec spent the whole fight hitting Hanser, and he still doesn't get the kill. Shrimp evaporates while trying to initiate. That is how far ahead TSM is. Oh my goodness. Let's see if this is going to be the kicker to give them positioning around Baron. Still 30 seconds less on someday. He does have teleport, but TSM do as well. And they're trying to go fast. Shrimp not alive for the smite. Alltech doing his damnedest to life steal back up, but that's two really squishy dudes who can't face check towards Baron. Enough tanks as well. TSM melt the objective and spend scaring the cues up with a smite. Now the gold lead's starting to get a little scary. TSM 6,000 gold ahead. Yeah, and the start of this fight, you can see why Dignitas would find a promising, but Biofrost again with a clutch mid fight hook, almost forcing Shrimp to ult in. And that doesn't keep TSM at bay. Everyone who needs to can hop out of that thing if they want to do damage. You can see as well, Double Up continues to go hop to the backside to try and pressure Altex. So he gets off of Hanser, and Hanser even getting out there with the Dark Passage means that TSM are coming with everybody wearing purple. Yeah, and this is another thing to kind of double back to the draft point for TSM. They deprioritized Kalista when compared to the rest of the league. And yes, Altec is having a good game on it, but Double is absolutely neutralizing the pick, so to speak. Every time Altec is going to get in kill range of a tank, Double Lift pushes him off of it, and Double Lift will do more damage in the 1v1. Deprioritizing Kalista, as well as kind of offering up the Talia there as the obvious mid lane choice and then jumping on it immediately. TSM draft Cassidy and Tristana. They play the early game calmly and now they are where they wanted to end up. Someday not exactly where he wanted to end up, but he still gets back to base. And Someday is not equipped to fight Cassidy at this stage of the game. Merc Shreds only plus a bit of health is kind of all that's keeping him alive versus that damage. And TSM will play it calmly for the next two minutes with this Baron buff. And to try and get some slaps onto the turret. Bjergsen with one auto takes about 35% of that turret's health. 
Then a QE takes 35% of someday's health as well. The main tank at this point for Digitas with how fast Shrimp was dying. This actually has a lot of repercussions for this entire series, actually, because TSM came in so well prepared in game number one. There's a hook, though. Ooh. Big card to the Colossus Shield as Fen gets hooked in with a fight. So breaking out double it. Picks off Shrimp again as Adrian Lowe. There's the reset as Bjergsen grabs the Blitzcrank. And Dignitas losing two already. Tarrant starting him out as mid in him will fall. Yeah, this game is turned real hard. It is just three alive for Team Dignitas. The wall doesn't even cut off the minions. Here comes TSM. I mean, there are so many dashes. TSM can probably get over if they need a double if He's going to go for it here as turret number one is going to fall. Taunt by the one as Arthur's the target. He melts as Biofrost gets credit for the kill. Everything going TSM's way. Keen is going to get shut down. No, not quite. But the Nexus is going to be the price to pay. Haunter falls on the other end of it, but double if stands and delivers onto the structure. Someday, one last hour as he dives in, but TSM will claim game number one and they were in no hurry, still ending the game under 35 minutes with the Nexus dive. That was a bold draft from TSM in game one, a composition style they haven't excelled on so far this year. And as Kobe mentioned, that has some far-reaching implications for the rest of the series with how well-prepared TSM look. Bjergsen playing the Cassidy in extremely well early on in the game as well. The double rings able to give him a lot of early power, bullying Keen even in that mid lane. Even though he was the one to receive the gank, his his flash was blown pre-six. That's kind of the only stage where on the Cassidy side, you're like, oh, okay, I don't, I'm not level six yet. I don't have my flash. Now I need to play defensively, but he still had the CS lead. I mean, in a lot of ways, both junglers played surprisingly defensive for people that are otherwise very aggressive when they feel like they need to be. I think Sven's like, well, if he's gonna farm, I'm gonna farm. And he's probably fine doing that, but Trim may have needed to get a bit more aggressive. Yeah, and that's the hard thing to kind of differentiate in this game, because when we look at the team compositions, Sven Skarin wanted to play defense in this game. They wanted to have a really late first blood, as long as it meant their turrets won't weren't being destroyed around the map. And Shrimp would be the one that then needs to make the aggressive play. The differentiation is, were there plays for him to to make, or was TSM just playing that strong of a defense? Well, certainly defended very well, but for more on the TSM win, let's check in with the analyst desk who are joined by Kiwi Kid. Thank you very much, Pastry Time. TSM coming out on top here in game one of our best of five series against Team Dignitas. Got to welcome Kiwi to the desk. Hey, it's been some time, my hey, friend. Hi, How yeah. you been? It's been a long time, yeah. <laughs> Does it feel good to be back in the studio? Yeah, it feels pretty good. I'm really happy to be see you guys and work with you guys. I hope I can provide some insight. My uh, plat one insight. There you go. Well, yeah. hey, that's been that's better than me. Yeah, yeah, better than me too. Than both yeah. of us right now in terms Hell of yeah. solo I'm so, cube. I'm so qualified. So. <laughs> there it is. All right. Well, yeah. you had the prediction of Dignitas at the beginning of the day. Before yeah. we get in to this game one, I wanted to give you a moment to explain why it is that you think Dignitas might come away with the victory here. Today. Yeah, I just thought without me being on the team, then Dignitas <laughs> would be able to win. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's still just game one, so. You know, it's not the end of the world, but oh, absolutely that's the main not. thing. Now, Adrian, I feel like the meta is really good for him. He's been working very well with wards. And just Team Dig, I like how aggressive they've been lately. And I just think that's what kind of wins games. Just You saw that at Rift Rivals that is a prime example, even though it's a, a, a bit far away. Right. Where EU was drafting very scaling comps, and then they were getting run over through Vision and Deep Wards. And... I thought that should have happened this game, but they seemed a little scared. So. Yeah, let's dive into it then. With these team comps, I think at first glance, most people would look at Dignitas and say, they're the team that should take the impetus. They're the team that should be playing aggressive through right. the early game. Yeah, and I think uh, it doesn't quite play well against TSM just because they have some of the most lane-dominant players in every position. And I, I know it, it, it is kind of a... You know, damned if you do, damned if you don't a little bit. Yep. You know, they pick scaling, and then you pick early game, and it's like, well, we have to smash them in lane, but it is very hard to do. And I think uh, there are some interesting things going on in the jungle in terms of, uh, you were pointing out the whole path that Sven took seemed really inefficient, but it did kind of mirror yeah. the Jarvan well. So uh, I think TSM... You know, did enough to, to make it hard for Dig to force plays, but they had to find an op opening. And we talk about those laning stats. Let's just pull up Bjergsen's CSD numbers here at 15 minutes, plus 21 in the Cassidy versus Talia yep. matchup. We did see, uh, you know, ban focus towards Keen in the mid lane. Three bans thrown at him by TSM. So we got to give a, a little nod to Keen for the work that he's done stacking up against one of the best mid laners of all time here in North America. Yeah. That Oh, you, oh, you go, go, yeah. go ahead for it. Yeah, that was good. All yeah. my analysts uh, have to sync yeah, today. To be fair, they probably only banned three or two of the three at the second phase, aka 
they didn't want Keen. They wanted Keen as a counter pick, right? They didn't want right. to like pick him as a safe. So I think it was kind of smart, and maybe they were kind of looking for a casting. Like you, you, when you kind of look at the bands, you want to see, hey, maybe TSM did kind of just plan this casting pick, and it would be really good, a lot of good against uh, Keen's comp. And you saw that Keen was actually pretty uncomfortable. I didn't like that he only went one. Eight, he didn't go any. AP pen items as the only AP on his team. I thought that was a huge, like, pretty much misplay. Mm -hmm. You want to be dishing as much damage as you can as Talia, her high base damages, and failed to do so. Yeah, I think especially when you saw, like, in team fights, he did a good job of finding knockbacks on the multiple members. Uh, you know, there's the top skirmish that went three for three. Yep. There's a couple around the mid lane where, like you said, if he had a little bit more magic pen, maybe he can actually insta give somebody or force them out of the fight at the very least. Uh, and at the end of the day, the, the game just stalled out for a really long time. You and I were making bets, you know, when's first blood gonna right. come in? And uh, it came in super late. And that favors TSM's comp anytime you have a Tristana versus a Kalista and a Shen versus a Renekton. So what's, but what's the fix here in this game? Because hey, the, 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 the comps were drafted as they were, right? And so if right. I put you in the shoes of Team Dignitas, Kiwi, how do you press it harder in that first 15 minutes on the side of Dig? I want to see Shrimp doing less of his jungle and forcing more ganks. He could have, yeah, he started, I believe he started bot side, but he could have, you know, just backed and went bottom, forced a flash hook play onto Thresh. He, Dignitas should have, like I said before, they shouldn't have been as scared going to the jungle. There was a time where they could have went to the jungle top side, but instead just backed out. There was, they actually were doing kind of fine. There is a way to win with Diggs comp even without kills, and we saw that by Diggs securing the Rift Hill at a pretty early at a pretty early time. That was good, mm -hmm. and then you can keep even without kills. If as long as you can get Baron Elder Dragon, keep the whole river yours, you can eventually win. Just power through, but yeah, they went for that one play onto Baron, and it ended up. Yeah, I, messing them up. I think that's a big thing, just because Dignitas is the team that usually finds free barons versus other people. Uh, they have this early game comp that they didn't play super mm -hmm. aggressively with. They could take a scaling comp, run this early game back in a sense where you're mostly focused on farming going even, and then if they actually execute their barons well, which is what we usually expect them to do, this game is on, you know, shoes on the other foot. Dignitas are the ones with a, a, a baron out of nowhere and a scaling comp. I mean, to be fair, they found a good look at the baron, didn't necessarily secure it. TSM strikes back. I know, Mark, you were talking about some baron stats coming into the matchup. These are two of our best Baron teams. Yeah, both of them have are basically in, in the league, leading the league for first Baron as well as Baron control. So they're great at it, but they usually get them in different ways looking back at the regular season. Dignitas find opportunities to force them when you're not ready, or they zone control you very aggressively when you're trying to get in to contest the Baron 5v5. TSM is more the team that they win those mid-game team fights because they're all then so well, team, yeah. and then they go to the Baron. So both of them have great stats, but it's about the clash of styles. All right, let's look at game two here, Kiwi. Let's work our way towards a Dignitas victory here. They've decided to go over to blue side here, so pick bands will flop sides. What do you want to see out of Dignitas here in game two to even it up at one and one? I want to see them not get any, I hope they don't get shaken up at all. It's just one game, so they should still just look at what they've done and like play more aggressive if needed. Uh, since they are blue side, Keen probably won't get a uh, counter pick mid, so I would like to see him get his his first or his pick site first or second rotation. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be good. And just get him something comfortable like, well, he couldn't get cast. I, I predict another cast will be a ban for um, TSM. Yeah, right. So maybe something more comfortable. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't see Keen getting Cassio for the yeah. entirety of the day. Mark, any thoughts here on what Dignitas can do? No, I mean, I would just like to see them pick a little bit more of an even scaling team comp. Don't force yourself into the situation where if you don't destroy the early game in the first 20 minutes of the game, you're going to get outscaled. Give yourself the opportunity in that mid game to use your good bearing control. It's a tendency of best of fives, especially in the postseason, to kind of extend into the mid and late game. So sometimes the aggressive team comps don't work out as planned. TSM, they came out ahead in game one, but Team Dignitas has a chance to strike back in game two. Their series continues when we return. Don't go anywhere.